solid rocket boosters or SRBs or rocket engines that use solid propellants. Sometimes they are also called solid rocket motors. Solid propellants are denser and generally produce more thrust than liquid rocket engines. However, solid propellants also tend to be less efficient. Solid rocket boosters also can't be throttled or shut off during flight. Solid rocket boosters are usually metal cylinders with a nozzle on one end. They are filled with solid propellant, which is a mixture of a solid oxidizer, a solid fuel, and a material that prevents them from combusting in the cylinder. SRBs are lit by a small combustion at the top of the motor. The space shuttle solid rocket motors were ignited by a large chain reaction. First, two NASA standard detonators, or NSDs, would go off. NSDs are explosives that are commonly used for staging spacecraft. The NSDs in this example are being used to separate the SRBs from the launch pad in addition to being used to ignite the SRBs. The NSDs will fire down a flame tunnel, which leads to a pyro booster charge. The pyro booster charge is a pyrotechnic device that will then light the igniter initiator. Then the igniter initiator lights the SRB initiator, which is a small solid rocket booster that fires down the center of the SRB and ignites the propellant in the solid rocket booster. Once the solid rocket booster is ignited, it produces thrust using Newton's third law. Newton's third law states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. In most rocket engines, the action is a hot gas moving at the back of the rocket. This action produces a reaction force that goes in the opposite direction. In other words, if you make the gas go down, then the rocket will go up. In order to make the gas go down, rocket engines use a nozzle. The nozzle channels the gas and makes it go in the direction that you want it to go. However, as the gas goes down the nozzle, it expands and loses pressure. If the pressure of the gas ever drops below the ambient air pressure, then the ambient air will start to cut off the exhaust gas. Eventually, this will form a shock wave that can tear apart the engine. This means that in a vacuum, people can have as long a nozzle as they want, but in an atmosphere, the length of the nozzle is restricted based on the ambient air pressure. Even in a vacuum, people still don't have really big nozzles because the thrust produced by the engine is dependent on the pressure of the gas minus the pressure of the ambient air. As the exhaust gas travels down the nozzle, it loses pressure, so with each centimeter that you add to, to your nozzle, you get diminishing returns on the thrust output, and eventually, the extra mass from increasing the nozzle starts to exceed any increase in thrust that you would get. Like most rocket engines, SRBs use a converging-diverging nozzle. The idea behind a converging-diverging nozzle is that you have a combustion chamber, then the width of the engine starts to decrease as it converges onto the throat of the engine, then the engine widens out and forms the bell. This is because thrust is dependent on the speed of the exhaust gases, which in turn is dependent on pressure. However, speed is not entirely dependent on pressure. The throat of your engine will actually increase the speed of the exhaust gas, because the time that it takes to leave the combustion chamber will always be constant, and the amount of gas leaving the combustion chamber will also be constant. Therefore, if you have a smaller throat than the same amount of gas, needs to go through a smaller space in the same amount of time, which means that the gas needs to go faster. The reason why the nozzle expands after leaving the throat is because gas wants to expand outwards. Nozzles will let the gas expand in every direction except up, because you never want to prevent a force of nature from doing what it wants to do. Let the gas do what it wants while channeling it so that it does what you want to do while doing what it wants. This is also why fuel tanks are often circular. Fluids will expand out in all directions equally, and circles are shapes where every line is the same distance from the center. One important statistic for rocket engines is the expansion ratio. This is the ratio of the size of the end of the nozzle to the size of the throat of the nozzle. The space shuttle solid rocket booster is an expansion ratio of 79 to 7, or about 11.3 to 1. This is terrible compared to the Merlin 1D's 16 to 1 expansion ratio. The Merlin engine is the engine used to power the Falcon 9 rocket. Expansion ratios can be used as a rough estimate of the length of the nozzle because all engines expand out at the same rate, and because we know that thrust increases with the length of the nozzles. This means that we could say that the Merlin engine will probably produce more thrust than the Space Shuttle solid rocket boosters. However, this is not true because the Space Shuttle solid rocket boosters use solid fuel, and the Merlin use liquid fuel. The solid fuel produces more thrust than liquid fuel. In fact, the Space Shuttle solid rocket booster is the most powerful engine to ever fly. The internal portion of solid rocket boosters are also meticulously designed. One important component in a solid rocket booster is the binder. The binder is the material that holds everything together. Binders are often materials that start as fluids but then dry and become a solid. This is because binders need to be mixed into the fuel mixture. 
However, in flight, they have to be solid so that the center of mass of the rocket doesn't shift as the fuel moves around in the asteroid beats. In addition to all of that, binders also can't be inert materials because the binders are burned along with the fuel. Because of that, the binder has to be able to combust into a gas and it has to have a high thermal energy output when burned. Fuel must burn into a gas because rockets produce thrust by shooting gas at the back. High thermal energy outputs are required because when gases are heated, they expand. If they can't expand, then they just decrease in pressure. Rocket engines are in closed spaces, so the gas will not be able to expand. Also, thrust is a function of pressure. One of the first binders ever was asphalt. Asphalt starts out as a liquid, then dries into a solid, which makes it a perfect binder. Also, asphalt is a great adhesive. However, asphalt does not perform well in high heat situations. Anyone who has ever drove on a hot day will know that. Asphalt was then replaced by polysulfides, which are molecules with a long chain of sulfur atoms. Unlike asphalt, polysulfides performed well in all temperature ranges. It was re replaced by ammonium perchlorate, because aluminum is one of the most efficient solid propellants, and polysulfides experience storage instabilities when combined with aluminum. A storage instability is another word for an explosion. In order to prevent storage instabilities, solid fuels have to be designed to generate minimal amounts of heat when stirred. If fuels were not designed this way, then when you mixed all of the propellants together, they would experience a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. Another way of mixing solid fuels is called high-intensity acoustic field mixing. This is when you use sound waves to mix something. In theory, this mixes fuel more evenly because sound will travel through the entire casing and mix everything evenly. While conventional mixing usually stirs some areas more than others. In order to increase thrust, engineers will try to maximize the surface area of the propellants in the ester beads. Increasing surface area will increase thrust because most objects can only burn on their surface. So if you increase surface area, then you increase the amount of propellant that can be burned at any time. Increasing the amount of fuel burnt per second will increase the amount of gas and thermal energy produced per second, which will increase thrust. However, in most situations, increasing surface area will also increase the volume of the propellant. Think of the fuel as a stack of papers. A stack of papers will have low volume, a low surface area, and a high mass. But if you took all of the papers in the stack and crumpled them, then you would have a high surface area, a high volume, and the same amount of mass. Having more volume will make so that you have more casing for the same amount of fuel. Engineers also use another cool trick to decrease volume while keeping mass the same. The AI engineers will use varying size grains of propellants in their motors, because using a large number of small grains will have a low density because the individual particles are not compacted together well. However, just using big grains would also have a low density because there would be so much space in between each grain. However, using a mixture of large grains and small grains will be the best because the large grains will have high individual densities and the small grains can fill the spaces between each of the large grains. SRBs also come with some inherent problems. First of all, there is the fact that you cannot throttle or shut off SRBs. In fact, this is what killed the astronauts aboard STS-51L, which is most commonly known as Challenger. The joints holding the SRBs to the rocket failed, and the SRBs went on without the rest of the shuttle. The hot exhaust gases from the SRBs ended up destroying the shuttle and killing all seven crew members. If those SRBs had been liquid fuel boosters instead, then they could have been shut off before they had time to kill the crew. The fact that you can't throttle or shut off SRBs also leads to some less fatal problems. For example, if you have multiple solid rocket boosters firing at the same time, then the rocket might become unstable because all of the SRBs could produce different amounts of thrust. They would produce different thrust because their fuels were made in separate batches and might have slightly different mixtures of propellants. This is partially fixed by having the ability to gimbal the nozzles of the SRBs. This is when you tilt the nozzle in direction so that the exhaust gases go in a different direction and turn the rocket. It is also sometimes fixed by making each matching segment on each SRB have fuel from the same batch. For example, both of the Space Shuttle's SRBs had four segments. Both bottom segments would have propellant from batch 1, both of the lower middle segments would have propellant from batch 2, etc. Another problem that SRBs encounter is that they can't be left sitting around for too long. While they can sit out for far longer than most liquid fuel rockets, they still have their limiting factors. Number one, heat and the absence of heat will cause the SRBs to expand and contract, but each individual material will expand at a different rate, which can cause the materials to deform over time. Number two, moisture can get inside the casing, which will change the combustion properties of the engine. Number three, the materials in the SRB can crystallize over time, which will change their combustion properties. 
Number four, the individual materials can leave their binders and separate, so that the oxidizing part of the grain is nowhere near the fuel grain so they can't combust. One final problem with SRBs is that they are less efficient than liquid-fueled rockets because they have to be stable. In liquid rockets, the fuels are kept in separate fuel tanks, but in SRBs, everything is kept in one casing, and you don't want those materials to combust in their casings. Have a nice day, and don't die!